G'day guys, Jason from the Utter Farm here. We're actually on the trial property this evening. What I thought we'd do is we'll go for a pasture walk and show you where I'm putting the girls tonight. I've actually just moved them in there and show you what they've come out of in the last 14 days they've been grazing across here on the trial property. We'll show you where they started 14 days ago and where they're now. And we'll have a look at the ground and we'll have a talk about the pasture and the remaining pasture that I've left and why I've left it and how I got it to get that way. It's taken four and a half years to get it like this. Before I was grazing continuously, it wasn't like this. It lucky to be two inches off the ground. And when it comes summer, hot conditions, it would die. So we head down and I'll give you a bow peek. Before they lay too much of this carbon down, I'll show you what I've just put them into. So there's those belted galloways there. Just three quarters way up their back. That little heifer there, she's just over 12 months old. About the same height as the galloways. Rainy and mini here. I'll get on the other side from the sun and they're fully grown. So as you can see, it's just under their belly. So that'd be well, easy two foot. Two and a half foot in height. This area up here is a bit thicker. Probably halfway up in his back here. Probably two and a half foot in height. I'll put this camera on the stand and I'll give you guys a look. I stand in. So you've got to get in early because they've obviously they've walked through there, they've chewed a bit off. I'll try and stand in it. I'll get you give you a look on how high it is before they do any more damage and lay this carbon down and start chewing it on me. As you can see, it's far from short. I'd say that's probably three foot in that area there, if not a tad more. And that's predominantly what it's like all the way around through here. And thick. This pasture is thick. Like, a, like hairs on a dog's back. It definitely wasn't like this four and a half years ago, I can tell you. What we'll do now is I'll head back to where they were 14 days ago and we'll, wait, and we'll make our way back to this point here where they're grazing tonight. Before we go though, this is rainy. She, she's heavily bagged. She's probably got, I'd say she could go any night now. She was due probably five days ago according to our chaos. How I know she can go any day, check out her teeth and udders underneath. They're really bagging up and that behind the vulva there starting to go like jelly there was a little bit of mucus coming out or oh, it's just still coming out in the morning check out between the legs her bags her udders are really starting to get full so i'd say she's probably only got a couple of days to go she's not going to stand still for me and minnie which is our cow down here which is rainy's mum She, if you look between her legs, she's starting to bag out too, but she was probably seven days behind Rainy. I'll come around here. See her valve is swelling. The others are full. Not going to play a game with me tonight. Too busy eating. We'll come back in the morning as well. I'll finish the video off and show you what this pasture is like after a, this will be a probably 12 hour graze. Oh, careful on that wire, it's still on, it's hot. Right, oh, so this is where they were. I'll just get in the bottom of the hill here. 14 days ago, right next to. So what we've come out of is there. And this is where they were 14 days ago. We'll have a look around. It's as you can see, it's starting to shoot back now. I'll spin it around. Just got to get out of that sun. So 14 days grazed. And that would be about a foot, predominantly a foot right across there. Higher in sections. So a foot. 14 days ago 
This point here is 13 days ago. If I had this pasture four and a half years ago, I'd be happy to put him into it. I would leave him in here because there's loads of pasture left. That's what I would have thought 13 years ago. Oh, sorry, four years ago. This is 13 days. The secret of why it's come back so fast in 13 days is because the amount of armor I've left on the ground and the residue I've left. We're going into the 12 day mark now. This is 12 days recovery. The reason why, if you have a look down, check out all the thatch. And this is on a driveway, mind you. So this is very hard and compact when we moved in here four years ago. But we don't use it as a driveway now. And I've laid residue or carbon down on the ground. And that's why it's so thick today. But it's not as thick as the stuff around it where we haven't driven the car and compacted the soil. This whole hill along here we're walking across now was clay. My lad used to have a BMX track, or should I say motor, motorbike track along there, he used to dig out with a shovel and was all exposed. The moment we stopped using the BMX and we started cell grazing and leaving, owning, eating 50% of maximum 50% of the pasture, we normally only like to get 30, 40% and leave 60%. But 50% is the board. You don't want to go under that 50 because then you start to interrupt the growth of the plant. You'll actually stop the roots from growing. Anything over that 50% mark, you're not stunting the roots. And then the plants will grow back straight away, will start growing back straight away. You're not stunting it. Anything over that 50%, like I said, and you'll be waiting days, weeks for that plant to get over the initial shock. I think where we are now is what are we at the 14, 13, 12, 11, 10. This was grazed 10 days ago. As you can see there's a fair bit of grass laid down still but it's also starting to shoot back. Not as much as that 14 day where we first started but there is parts shooting back. As you can see the fresh shoots in through there. You can see that dead residue is the carbon. That's the carbon they've laid on the ground. That's the residue you're building up. You're building your armor, your thatch layer on the ground. That thatch layer is, is acts as a thermal insulation blanket for the ground. Not only that, when it rains, the rain can't penetrate through that thatch. It actually hits the thatch and the velocity of the rain is slowed down. Before I started regenerative farming, I was continuous grazing like I do out in the outer farm because it's not set up yet to do regenerative farming. But there's no thatch or armor on the ground. It was like, it was like that. Bare dirt, no armor. The rain would hit that direct onto that dirt and compact that soil. With the amount of thatch I've got here now, go off the driveway there's no way you can get through that the rain hits that hits that pasture or thatch layer the velocity stops and it seeps through and slowly seeps into the soil no more compaction as that thatch layer is breaking down it's building new fresh topsoil not compact topsoil loose and fluffy topsoil I think we're up to the 10 days mark. This was, oh, this would have to be close to a metre and a half, nearly five foot in height here, because this is a, this is an overflow from the neighbor's dam. So this always gets a lot of water. It's got a lot of fox tar grass in it. I'll go up on the top of the hill here. This would be nine days ago. As you can see, a lot of thatch has been laid down. This is where we had that bale grazing video, all the way across the top here. As you can see, the thatch there, you don't get that when you continue grazing. You only get that when you high density cell graze. You need the animal impact on the ground 
to get your armour or your thatch laid over. If you've only got one or two animals and they're grazing across here, you're not going to get that. It's from cell grazing them that they continually walk over the long pasture laying that over. And because a lot of this was seed after the rain, if you'd, you hadn't put them into a cell at high density, they would have selectively grazed. A lot of this pasture, or some of this pasture had come to seed, so it has reduced in energy. If you were, this was on a continual graze property, they wouldn't be touching the grass because it's seeded. 70% of that energy is gone, the sugar content's gone. They'll eat it because they're hungry, but it'll lock on the outer farm and over on the top of the paddock there, I'll show you later. It come to seed, we didn't get in there soon enough, and the pasture's still standing. Because they selectively graze around it, the higher in energy plants, which are the greener plants that haven't seeded. Because remember, there's only one job that a plant needs to do. It wants to germinate. Unless it's seeded, it hasn't finished, it'll keep growing. And the moment it comes to seed, it depletes in energy. It's finished its job, dropped the seeds, dies off. And the cows don't touch it because it's depleted energy. And remember, the rumen of the animal, it takes four times as long for the rumen to break down seeded pasture or pasture that that has come to seed and lignified than it does fresh green pasture which is full of energy and full of sugar and full of moisture so we're coming across the area now this would have been whoa, eight days ago now so all the way down to here as you can see this is a bit longer i've left this longer because this is where we done that bale grazing video I've left it longer, so this was bare dirt across the top if you go back to that bale grazing video. We've only had one roll on here. I keep it long so the sun can't penetrate through the armour I've left on the ground and dry out the soil. What I like to do is see areas here. I try and get as much thatch laid down as possible to protect that clay or dirt underneath. But not only that, it's building fresh dirt on top. So you can see the difference. We're coming down to, this would be seven days ago now. So we're just starting to get green tips through this pasture now. Just starting to shoot back. And that's where they were 14 days ago. You can see the difference, the greenery. That's got a bit more of a browner tinge to it than that 14 days, which is almost totally green apart if you get part from if you get right up close and look through you see the residue through it now we're coming up to seven days ago what I did here though they're grazing right adjacent to where they went in seven days ago tonight oh, jumped over that hot wire you can see this is starting to get fresh tips through it now I'm not too worried about him coming back and regrazing it because as you can see, I wish I showed you seven days ago, it's about a foot and a half difference in height. But that's the pasture they've gone into and there's the line, seven days. So there is a distinct line in there from where they were seven days to where they were now. There's no way they're going to come back and eat these fresh tips which predominantly looks like it's only like two or three inches in high max. They're going to stay there in that pasture there. Min here is the dominant one. She may push a few of them over and they may have a bit of a chew on it. But I'm not too greatly concerned because we won't be coming back in this area for at least 21 days after the cell. They've still got another... They've got to go back on the hill over there and graze up there. There's probably one, two, three, four six seven eight probably four days with the grazing up there 12 hour moving twice a day and then they go back into the front paddock there's probably another six or seven days with the grazing there because of all the round of rain we've had we've had probably 200 mil two, 200 mil which is eight inches of rain in the last couple of weeks so that area we we're into where i showed you 14 days ago That'd be ready to go by the time they finish across this property, which is going to be another, what did I say that was? About another 10 days, 12 days time. 
they'll probably be ready to go again around the whole circuit again but that wouldn't happen if we had all the rain generally I like to give it generally around that 21 day mark at a minimum to bring them back in see the idea is you've got to give that plant full time to recover you're leaving two-thirds of that plant well let's say let's call it 50 percent less than two-thirds it's gonna it has time to collect that carbon dioxide and the sunlight out of the air and recover and because there's copious amounts of thatch I'll just bend down and show you that rain that we had oh, I can't even get to the bottom it's still going oh, I reckon that's gonna be good four inches there's no way the Sun can pull that moisture out four inches from the ground so that plant is going to have months and months worth of moisture under that ground. If you compare it with the other farm, where we haven't got the fence and the watering system set up, watering system set up, but the the electric fence and that isn't. I can't part no thatch. There is no thatch. It's bare. You can see the grass, and you virtually see the soil straight away. I can guarantee if I go out there now and done a moisture content reading on, on that pasture. There wouldn't be nothing compared to that there which is that we going back that that like i said that is wet that thatch is wet underneath and that ground is wet underneath up here this would be we just come out of the seven days ago this would be six days ago six days ago they were up on top of the hill here they graze this area here so that's six days. Coming down here, this will be five days. I didn't do a very good graze here. This was done at the middle of the day. Because we had hot, humid conditions up here at the moment after that rain, the humidity is around the 80% in 32, 33 to 4 degree days. I only had them in here for probably three or four hours and I let them out and they could shelter under the shed. And they just grazed up and down the driveway and really didn't come back into here so this is not a really good graze but because of the high humidity and temperature i didn't want to keep them in this cell so we're coming down to four days this was four days ago as you can see there's nothing shooting back armors laid down three days Along here, big areas of thatch, and this would be two days. And then they're back in the weather tonight. So, the reason this is two days in there tonight because I had them going back up that driveway grazing that in the hot days I had them grazing the driveway because it saves me where I run the car it saves me mowing it so in really hot days instead of giving them a new pasture I've just been throwing them back in the driveway section which is probably takes up maybe two or three times out of that 14 days so it's probably for around about an eight hour period during the day so instead of giving them a whole new area and then moving them out because it's too hot I've just let them regraze that driveway for me not too worried about the armor laid down there it is on the sides but it's more so to keep it short because i've got to mow it for the car a anyways so we'll leave these girls here overnight we'll come back in the morning and show you what they've laid down you can see they've already gone across the top there look that's all bitten off all the way over there tell you what, it doesn't take long at all i've got what two two fully grown 12 months old those galloways they'd be fully grown they'd probably be seven year old now one of them's got no teeth so she's finding it very hard to chew at all so she doesn't put on weight that one there's all right she's she's got teeth left she puts on weight but the one at the top very hard i don't know how she grinds the food 
But she's doing what she's doing. We can't part these two. I think they've been together forever, basically. One can't do anything without the other. Right, guys, we come back in the morning. We'll have a look what they've done. On the way back up to the house, I'll show you that area of seeded pasture and what happens. That video I done, why you shouldn't let your pasture come to seed, it's a bit of a controversial subject. So I'm going to do another video on that and tell you why and what that video was about. It wasn't specifically about not letting it come to seed. It's why you shouldn't, more so the quality or quantity, you should I say the quality of the pasture. Not so much the fact that it drops seed and regerminates. It was a quality dropping the energy. But I'm definitely controversial. I'm going to do a video, but I still don't agree in letting it come to seed. And I'll tell you why in another video. But anyway, back on to... I'll show you a point. That's all been grazed. That hasn't been seeded. Right next to it, that's all blue grass, creeping blue through there they've eaten. Right next to it, Rhodes grass. Absolutely dropped its seed no energy hasn't been eaten they put their head through there eating a bit of of the creeping blue but they haven't eaten the roads look at it it's all seeded still standing there they don't even walk through it they just put their head into it and eat the grass through it and that is why you don't want to let your pasture come to seed it's going to be standing like i said if you do that one there there'd be 80 percent there wouldn't even be 80 percent or should I say 20% or 10% energy left. That's why it's still standing all the way through here. And as soon as it's, that's finished, bang, straight into it. Straight into the fresher grass. Bit of creeping blue. Look at the grass behind it. Have to be at least a foot and a half higher than in front of it, apart from that road grass, which is, they're not touching because like I said, it's depleted in energy. They know that. They, they know what's good for their rumen and what's not. They can always choose to not to leave that and eat the greener grass because they know it can break it down and it's more good for them. Not only taste, energy and taste. That'd be like eating a stick off a tree. Imagine trying to chew that with no moisture in it. No goodness. Right guys, we're gonna head up. Well, I'm gonna head up tonight. And I'll show you that area in the morning and finish that video off. Morning, girls. So it's five o'clock in the morning here in Queensland, Australia. As you can see, most of them are still lying down. The Galloways are up. When we looked at the video yesterday, that grass was three quarters up the, up the way of the Galloways back. Now you can see it's below there. Just touching the bottom of her belly if not below her knees, so that's probably a foot high. Touch more, foot and a half max in some areas, but that's perfect. That's what I wanted, particularly up on this area here because this is situated on a hill, you can see. And this had no armor on the ground or thatch when I first moved in here. So the idea of this is, you can see they've laid a fair bit down now for me overnight. Like I said, this is three, three and a half foot high. What I want to do is build that thatch layer up to stop the velocity and also not only that the velocity because it's slowing that velocity down it seeps through so it's got time to soak into the ground instead of hard continuous compact grazing from continuous grazing and having the water run off down into the drain it actually has got an opportunity now to stay in the ground this here is probably a foot and a half high that's probably the longest of the sections the rest is a foot that's, but that's reasonable height of what I normally leave my pastures. But up here, I try and don't go under that foot if I can help it. If I've got to do a shorter graze in this area, I will. Two reasons. To hold that thatch down like I was just showing you, to slow the velocity down. Also add that insulation blanket to stop the sun pulling the moisture out of the ground from me. Also that extra armour above the ground, which is still standing, that foot high doesn't allow the sun to go through at ease and pull the moisture out of the ground. How do I grade this down to, say, even half that height, 100 mil? It's going to be a lot easier for that sun to dry out this ground. And this ground was already dry enough as it was because we, you get a bit of runoff here when we first got the property. But by adding that thatch layer onto the ground and this armour, it now enables me, 
to hold that moisture longer in the ground. Eventually, when the thatch layer is like the rest of the property on those flat areas, really, really thick, I won't have a moisture issue up here. And the grass will always grow thicker up here like it does in the other paddocks. But at the moment, it's, it's great now. A load's better than it used to be, but it can hold more moisture. And it's just going to get thicker and thicker over time. Then I won't need to worry about the, the, the amount of armour. It can be a little bit more reduced, but I still want to keep that 50% minimum across the whole property of grazing any lower than that like i said it stunts your root growth in anyway, between a week and two weeks so that's probably it i'll leave his girl piece i've got to move them now move their water move the cell in preparation for the day and then i've got to head out the other farm i've got more fencing to do notice rainy hasn't dropped a calf yet not some, I'll set a couple of days so. Sure. So, on that note, I hope you have a good morning, a terrific afternoon, and an awesome evening, guys, wherever you're watching us from. And we'll catch you later. Righto, girls, ready to move? Yeah.